Sweet School on RealArtCulture.com is brought to you by Syngenta Canada, Alberta Wheat Commission, and CNM Seeds. Sabrin of Antera Research talking about top dressing, uh, looking to uh, maximize protein in uh, in wheats. Brunel producers, we've been seeing increased practice of, of this in Western Canada. I guess first of all, the basics: when uh, when should a producer apply nitrogen in crop? Uh, if a producer is looking at um, increasing their yields, generally they recommend you try to be there before the five or six leaf stage to influence yield after that or maximum yield is set. So anything that we do after that generally will go to protein. Um, there are producers that are trying out stream bars or dribble banding nitrogen into the canopy. With that practice though you need a bit, you do need some degree of rainfall, probably a half inch to an inch, especially on a clay soil to, to wash that into the root zones to the plants to take them up. Now our trouble here in uh, Western Canada is the rainfall is limited once we get into these timings. So uh, better practice that people have been looking at, I guess I'll just lead into it, is top dressing for protein post anthesis, so after the flowering. So those are two different things. One, if you're doing it early, that's for, that's for yield. Later on is, is for, for building protein. Well, if you want to influence yield, generally you have to be in there before the five to six leaf stage, because by that point, the wheat has set its maximum yield. So anything you do after that is to try to maintain it but then there is interest in trying to top up the protein. So once we have a better idea of what the growing conditions have been through the spring, if, uh, if conditions weather-wise and uh, everything's off to a good start, we seed it early. Generally, we have the, a higher yield potential, which is, tends to be where we'll run shorter on protein. So there's a lot of interest from growers on whether or not it's good to, to top it up. So what about combining your nitrogen application with other uh, other applications with the sprayer? Yeah, there is there is a lot of interest because we're going post anthesis or post flowering. There's a lot of interest to trying to combine one of these applications with your fungicides for fusarium headlight, but it's not recommended um, because we're applying 10 gallons of the recipe is 10 gallons of 28 with 10 gallons of water with a flat fan nozzle, and it, it, it can cause a lot of leaf burn. If we're applying it in the heat of the day with you know, 40 kilometer winds and hot temperatures, we're going to cause a lot of leaf burn and potentially hurt yield that way. So this recipe, it is recommended to go as close to dew point as you can. So later at night, past the heat of the day to try to minimize leaf burn. Now, once we try mixing that in with uh, fungicides, a lot of times we're adding 28 to our herbicide spray with a contact herbicide is to make it burn better. So a lot of the fungicides that are uh, ECs or they're, they're oil based, it's, there's, there's potential to do a lot of damage there. So We're, we're seeing increasing interest in this in, in Western Canada, but it is done elsewhere, uh, stateside in particular? Yeah, they have been doing more work with it stateside, that's where the recipe came from, but it's been a common practice in Europe. There's research in, in the Northern Plains in the US going back to the, the 50s and 60s where they were trying to dabble with spoon feeding the crop and increasing protein. The lack of rainfall later on in the season was a big factor in limiting the success. And then of course you can also contribute or attribute it to, to market factors, perhaps the end of the, the wheat board and the, the way grain companies are also doing their, uh, their buying now. Yeah, there's definitely more interest now because we're moving to to more of a US type buying system where protein you know, in a year with lots of protein, there won't be a huge premium, but there could be, or vice versa, there could be some big discounts. So, all right, definitely a lot more interest in manipulating. Now, there's also a lot of interest going into predict. We can't really predict whether we're going to have a 12% protein, a 13 or a 14% protein ahead of the season because we don't know what the, the weather is going to be. Even after heading, if we have long, cool days. You know, we're, we're still going to be building yield, building yield, which will dilute the protein that's in there. So we don't know if we're going to end up with a 12 or 13 or a 14. But you know, there is work being done right now in trying to measure whether or not the crop is short using nitrogen rich strips and calibration charts, uh, green seeker, chlorophyll meters. 
Let's talk, with, let's talk with that research then. There is a project underway here in Manitoba looking at how, how far we can push yield and, and protein with some of the new wheat varieties that we're seeing. Yeah, with some of the new general purpose wheat varieties, we're trying to look at how hard we can push, number one, the yield, and number two, the protein. And, you know, As we move into more common yield goals of 70, 80, 90 bushels with some of these spring wheats, it's um, it's how hard do we need to fertilize these yields. If we get the right weather with a lot of mineralization, we have that buffer where we'll get higher yields than what we fertilized for. But um, if you use the typical recipe, uh, so many pounds of N per bushel, with some of these high yields, we're asking for 200 pounds of nitrogen, which is a significant investment to put in ahead of the crop. So you're looking at options including just the status quo, what the farmer's doing across the whole field, and then adding 30 pounds and adding 60 pounds, seeing, seeing how, that, uh, how that turns out? Yeah, there's a project underway right now coordinated by Manitoba Agriculture. Uh, it involves um, extension personnel, industry partners, as well as uh, a group of producers. So we're doing a lot of work evaluating small plot research as well as field scale trials. But just like you mentioned, we're going what the farmer status quo would be, but then what, it, what, you know, what does an extra 30 pounds or 60 pounds give us? So a lot of, there's a lot of replicated data. It's going to be quite interesting this, this winter to start diving into some of that. Well, we'll look forward to those results and uh, yeah, thanks for talking about what's happening and, and explaining how this works here, Bruno. For sure, my pleasure. Thanks again. Thanks for the opportunity.